So in this video we are going to factorize. So let's factorize the following questions as far as possible. So at number one we have two terms, right? We've got this term over here and we've got this term over here. Let's factorize and see what we can take out. So you need to separate things. So I see that there's numbers, so that's a three and there's a nine. Then there's x's and then over there there's an x and then there's y's over there and over there. So looking at the numbers, what is the biggest number that can go into 3 and 9? Well, 3, right? So we can take out a 3. Now here we have an x squared and here we have an x. Well, the biggest out of those two that we could take out would be x. And then both of them have a y, so we can take out a y. We then open up a bracket and we see what's left over. So in this first term, well, that 3 was taken out completely, so we'll just be left with 1. This term originally had two x's. One of them was taken out, and so we have 1 left over. And then there, there is no y's left over. Going into this next term, well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then this term only had 1x, and it only had 1y. Both of which were, Both of those were taken out, and so that will be the final answer. If you ever want to check yourself, you could multiply the 3xy back into the bracket and you should end up with the original answer. Moving on to number 2, so we have two terms once again. And so with these numbers, the 3 and the 6, well the biggest number you could take out there is a 3. This one has an x squared and this one has an x squared, so we can take out an x squared. This one has a y to the power of 2, this one has a y to the power of a 3, so we can always take out the lowest one, so that's going to be y to the power of 2. We then open up the brackets and we see what we have left. Well, we're going to be left with a minus 1 over here, because if you had to multiply this back, you would get minus 3x squared y squared. Then we're going to say plus, and then 3 times 2 gives us 6, and then this term had two x's, both of which were taken out over here, and so there's no x's left over. However, there will still be one y left over, because this term originally had three y's, we only took out two of them. Here we have three terms. We have term number one, term number two, and term number three. There is no number that can go into all three of those, and so we can't take out any numbers. Yes, there's a four, you could have taken out a 4 if it was only this term and this term, but then this term at the end would have been excluded. We can't even take out an A because yes, this one has an A, this one has an A, but this one doesn't. So we can only take out a B. So this term here has a B squared, this term has a B squared, and this one has a B4. So you can always take out the lowest one and that's going to be B squared. Let's see what we have left. So in the first term, the 4 will still be there and the a will still be there. In the second term, the 8 will still remain, the a3 will still remain, but the b squared won't be there. The third term originally had 4 b's, so we took 2 of them out and so it will still have 2 left over. Here we have 3 terms, that's term 1, term 2 and term 3. They all have an x. The first term only has 1x, the second term has 2, and the third has 4. So you can always take out the lowest amount, and so that's gonna, we can take out an x to the power of 1. So what are we going to have left in the first term? Well, if there's nothing left over, you should always write a little 1 over there. In the second term, the 2 will still remain, and one of its x's will still be there, because it had 2, and only 1 was taken out. The third term originally had four x's, however one has been taken out, and so it will have three x's left over. And moving on to the last question, well, we can't take out an x because this term has an x, this term has an x, but this last one does not. However, they all have a number that's in common, so what number could you take out? Well, you could definitely take out a three, then all that will be left with all that will be left with in term 1 would be negative x cubed, would be left with negative 2x in term number 2, and negative 3 left, would be left with in term 3. How do we know this? Because if we had to multiply this 3 back in, you would end up with minus 3x squared, which is what we had. If you had to multiply the 3 over here, you would be left, you'd get minus 6, which is what we had. And if you had to multiply this 3 over here, 
you'd be left you'd get minus 9